good. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Common Investor. We have a, a few just very common investors here at uh, on the right-hand screen. We're going to be kind of just going through the market, um, our different thoughts and opinions on everything, and um, just kind of just kind of go from there. So I guess my first question, everybody, would be thoughts on the market today. You know, it was a really good day, up 7%, Dow Jones right here, 7.7%. Huge day, huge bounce back. Um, you know, what are you guys' thoughts? You know, was this warranted or was it, you know, more of just a, you know, speculation? I think it was, uh, you know, warranted, but I think it was like a little bit of an overreaction to like Trump's news yesterday. Um, but like, I guess coronavirus, like cases are starting to uh, de decrease in New York City. Yeah, and I think that's what led to this, this big up. Um, this big move up today was just, I, I'm pretty sure that New York City is have kind of on the down as far as like new cases. Was that, was that it? Or I think that was, I got the numbers here. Uh, Saturday, 10,000 new cases, Sunday, 8,000, Monday, 8,000. All right. Uh, hospital admissions are down. ICU admissions are down. Deaths are stable now from 600 on Saturday down to the 590s for the last two days. Uh, and analysts for months have been saying that when we reach that inflection point where the curve starts to flatten, that's when we're gonna see that bottom part of the market and everything start to take a turn for the better. Gotcha. Yeah, so I mean this, I mean, I guess in the grand scheme of things, how, how long has it been? It's been maybe like four, five weeks since like a month about a month yeah so i mean if the bottom if the the height of it's already happened then i would go ahead and say that the, we've already seen the bottom from i think was it one, like last week or the week before where it, it really was, bottomed uh, out i believe the um, 23rd of march that wednesday yeah at that bottom that's what i would say um do you guys think it's bottomed out as of yet or you think we have more to come I think it's it's all speculation right now. I mean, every single day we've been seeing an extremely volatile market. Um, besides last week, it was pretty stable for a couple of days. Um, and it's all speculation. That's what it's coming down to. Uh, until, until you see people with, with antibody tests and, and people starting to walk around, uh, going to our bars, going to our restaurants, actually going on the streets and, and patronizing these businesses, I don't think you're going to see any... Um, you're going to see any true V-shaped recovery until then. Right. But once we do see that, I definitely think it's going to be a V-shaped recovery. Speaking of V-shaped recovery, I have an article right now I'm from CNBC that says that the V-shaped recovery is looking less and less like it's going to happen. I'm thinking it's more of a Nike swoosh. That's what they're saying. Yeah. If I could jump in on what Eric said about the volatility, I'd just like to point out that Every volatility index I've looked at has been at its lowest point today since the first week of March. So lowest it's been in a month. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, it, it's kind of looking, it's kind of looking good, but it just, it's just so uncertain, I guess, at this point. Um, I guess jumping along, you know, is there any specific stocks that you guys are looking at for this week? Um, I know we had a big run up today. Um, but is there anything that, you know, this week that you guys might be eyeing and looking for at a price point? Um, I'll, let me see what I'm looking at. If anyone's got anything that top of mind as of right now. Um, I think mainly what I'm looking at is the airline stocks. I know Warren Buffett kind of pulled out of Delta and Southwest. That's kind of really what, what slammed them over the weekend. Um, but I still, I, I feel like the, Airlines aren't going to go anywhere. Um, they're part of the bailout package. Um, we need airlines to kind of get around to flip from place to place. And then, like I said, they're obviously in that bail that bailout package. So I think they're fine. Um, really, what I think Buffett was doing is getting under that ten percent mark. I think, yeah, six months prior, he had said that he accidentally bought too many shares and got over the ten percent mark. So when you get over ten percent, you have to disclose your positions, your buys and sells within that stock. So I think he was just 
leveling off and that's what however many shares that he got rid of just pushed him under that 10 percent mark so I, I don't think it's a he's losing faith in the, the airlines he said in a in a, a cnbc interview three four weeks ago that he has no intention of selling um airline stocks even though he did but i i don't think it's that he's lost faith in it so that's really what i'm going to be eyeing as airlines i know they've been slammed because I think oh, Delta Delta's losing like 60 million a day. So, um, or one of them, I can't remember if it was Delta or not, but that's, that's what I'm eyeing for this week. I, I picked up a couple more Southwest today, actually. Um, so that's what I'm going to be looking at for this week. Any, any stocks you guys are looking for? If we want to keep it on airlines, I, uh, when I'm looking at airlines, I'm looking at United and American. Um, American is more of the, you know, short distance, city to city. I mean, it's only in the United States. Um, and it's, it's part of the ballot package. And when we talk about the airline ballot package, uh, the airline ballot package was only like 15 billion, I think after nine 11. And now it's like 40 billion. So, I mean, we're, yeah, it's huge. we're talking a lot of government intervention in airlines at this point. So, uh, it's definitely something that I'm watching. I think, um, Alec mentioned earlier that, you know, Americans got some of like the largest equity and they're at the like the the bottom of the bottom as low as they're going to go so it's definitely something to watch i like it anything other than airlines i know we we talked uh, pretty extensively on that um any other things that you guys are eyeing? um i mean i know it's something that we talk about a lot uh, i think cruise lines are you know going to be a good this is like a good time to start looking at them too, uh, specifically like Carnival Cruise Line, CCL. Because, yeah. you know, although I think there's, there's a chance that they could go bankrupt, probably like, you know, like a 20% chance they could go bankrupt. I think there's like a huge upswing potential that you could have on them. I, I could see them back at like 20 to $30, even within like the next year or two. So I I'll think it's a good up on the buy Yeah, I definitely, I mean, for Carnival, definitely a very... It's definitely um, a risky play too. Very risky play. Um, I did get in them at like 30 bucks. I don't think I'm getting back in. Um, but yeah, definitely a really risky play as far as bankruptcy because they're not going to be bailed out whatsoever. Um, just love looking at this three-month chart. They're just absolutely slammed. You guys yeah. see that on the screen, like right? Down, yeah, they were down yeah. like 90% from their – they were at like $70, trading at $70 yeah. at one point. Yeah, like six months. Yeah, they were, geez. Yeah, so. So if, you know, yeah, if you if you have any sort of faith in the cruise industry, now's the time to definitely get into them. Granted, they did make a pretty big move today, 20%. Yeah, maybe. they're up 20% today. And, like, and that's based off of a new 9% yeah. investor. Um, so obviously someone has, had, has some sort of faith in them, kind yeah. of brings some consumer confidence. That's um, a blip three percent on their past year high so that's because didn't saudi arabia put a big stake in them is that is that why yeah yeah that's what i thought so um i mean it's it's definitely interesting um i think the the thing that you got to think about when you think about cruises is the consumer base um you see a lot of very loyal cruisers that all they do is cruise a couple times a year um people that live on cruise ships after they retire and like it's a very don't want to say cult-like, but it's a very uh, cult-like following. Um, I think it would be hard for people to say that they're done going on them. It's just going to take some a couple of years of increasing consumer confidence again. Um, if it doesn't go bankrupt, then it's not a bad long-term position, but it's a very risky position based on the possibility of bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, anything else on those lines? Um, I guess what I'll do is kind of just go – person by person and see, you know, what, what, what you're picking up, what you're staying away from. I'll start with Nick. Nick, what have you picked up recently or what you're, what are you looking at? I know you, you talked a lot about carnival there. Um, um yeah, I, I bought, um, obviously I picked up shares of carnival. I'm also just looking at like, uh, VLO. So the, the Vanguard, uh, the market, yeah. S and P, um, ETF. So I think that's like, a, it's a good time definitely to get into ETFs right now or uh, any other index funds because 
you know, you're not, you, you very seldom see those at a, a discount and uh, Vanguard specifically is a good one because it has like the lowest expense ratio. So it's a really good one to pick up. Um, I picked up them last week. So they're definitely a good one to get into. Yeah, I know. As, as far as the market goes, what are we down? Like 25% from, from the 25 paper? or 30, I think. Yeah. I know we, I think we bottomed out at 30, just around, just around 30. Um, so pretty much right in line where we bottomed out back in, what is this? 2018. 2018, yeah. So, I mean, that's what led to a really, you know, strong year in 2019. So maybe, you know, it'd be nice to have a bounce back like that. Yeah. It's a little different as of right now, just because this is actually hurting the economy and this was really, there really wasn't much to it at that point. So. Yeah, definitely looking at the market um, for a nice bounce back. I mean, you're looking at a huge, huge run up, you know, once we, we get back to, to test the new highs again. So, um, yeah, they're we're, definitely a, one of, a, they're a safer play for sure. Yeah, for sure. So, good insights there. All right, uh, we'll go to Eric. Um, what are you looking at, picking up, staying away from? Um, today, I added Cisco is one of my positions. So it pains me that we're on Zoom. Um, even though we know that Cisco is always <laughs> the better play um, in any type of business related world. Um, so I look back at their 10K that they filed back in September, just to kind of look at their business plan and see what they're going towards. Um, so their three main points were enabling network automation, increasing the value of a network and transforming their business model. So um, they, they're enabling their network automation is providing single highly secure network fabric. It's enabling the, launch, the faster launch of businesses. Um, it's seen as a transformational shift in building and managing of networks. They instituted it in 2017, which inspired like a 30% gain uh, in the tail end of 2017. Um, so the level of like $37, which you can probably see. Yeah, they moved up pretty yeah, pretty significantly from, from July onwards. Yeah, from 30 and, um, was about yeah, Their current cool. level that I bought at was around $39. Um, that's nice. So it's, it's a $2 difference from when they first saw that initial spike. Um, since the initial launch, launch of the intent-based networking, they're helping manage more users, devices, and things um, connected to networks. Um, so when they, what I was really interested in is when they started talking about the increasing the value of their network. Um, and this has to do with unlocking the power of data. So what they're, what they're talking about is creating secure networks, which enables customers to prevent, detect, and remediate cyber attacks to, to maintain a secure network in a multi-cloud uh, multi world. And we're all, we're all seeing cloud. I mean, you're seeing Microsoft come out with the uh, Azure. You're seeing Amazon. Um, they're starting to push for the... Um, the White House contract. So I think you're seeing a, a shift to cloud as data storage. Um, so seeing business security in, in that type of respect um, is, as, as a main focus is interesting. Um, and this is also helping design solutions to simplify, secure, and transform how customers work in that multi-cloud world, whether it be private cloud, hybrid cloud, or public clouds. Um, and what I'm also seeing is they're increasing the amount of software offerings and proportion of those offerings that are subscription-based. And I love a subscription-based company. Um, so they're going to start doing um, systems as a service, term licenses, and perpetual licenses. So seeing that new shift in, in developing income um, and focusing mostly on the cloud world and getting it for the price that it was in 2017 when they first introduced um, their network automation, I think it's, I think it's a, a steal. And if they don't, if they don't open up their pockets and, and try to become the at home working business after, after this entire thing is done, I'd be shocked. So uh, it's definitely something that I bought. Um, I love it a lot and it's definitely a long-term investment for me. Yeah. I like, I like this. It's like got a definitely got a sustainable competitive advantage. I mean, if we're looking at um, like compared to like zoom, I know we like, we mentioned that in the beginning. I mean, I guess Zoom's getting a big push right now. I know we're on it right now, but they're getting a big push up with everyone trying to communicate um, virtually. But once everyone goes back to work, um, I don't really see, you know, Zoom having that market share. So I think, you know, you got a good one here with Cisco and they, they have a dividend as well. 
Um, I'm not sure. I'm not really a, 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 a dividend investor. I'm more of like a, a growth. Yeah, yeah. But even so, I mean, even if, if, we, if you go down and it's got a nice dividend, you're still at least getting, you know, some return, um, yeah. you know, in the short term at least. So I, I feel like they do. I just I had it pulled up, but I, I can't see I it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's return on equity is like 39.7%. Yeah. It's growing. I see, I see it growing in this, this post, uh, post COVID-19 world. Um, I, I see it as a good business regardless of this rather yeah. than unlike zoom. I mean, you see Cisco WebEx that's used pretty frequently in, in state work and in that type of, um, industry and businesses where you see zoom more in the educational setting. I think Cisco has the advantage in the business world. They have the name. Um, I, I, I like them not because of WebEx, but because of everything that they offer in addition to it. I like it. Thanks, Eric. All right, we'll go to Chris. Chris, what do you got for us? Okay. So I'm new to the investing world. No um, worries. <laughs> I made my first um, stock purchase last, last week. <laughs> what would you end up picking up? Um, I picked up RTX, which was the, the merger between Raytheon Technologies and United Tech, Raytheon and um, United Technologies. Um, I, they became the, with the merger, they became the second largest aerospace and defense. And I believe that just has long-term Behind Boeing. Behind Boeing. Behind yeah. Boeing. Oh, yeah, I said second highest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boeing is very volatile right now, so. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of getting... I mean, at least, yeah, I mean, I would mean with Boeing, they're, they're kind of getting a double whammy with the 747 max production as far as like that kind of thing. And then the coronavirus kind of just hit them both. But, you know, with, with this pick, you're not really getting that. So you're not getting as much volatility. So yeah, they, they have a better um, balance sheet so far. Um, they're just more up to, to, well, obviously, Boeing will survive because the United States won't let them die because that's essentially like their, their. Um... But it's it's interesting because in order for a bailout to happen, the United States, the government said that they would need to have equity in Boeing, and Boeing said we don't want that to happen. Um, we're going to go to the private industry for for these loans, um, and it was a mass amount of loans. I don't know how easily they're going to find that money, but. Uh, I think that's. Little... I think I think having having Raytheon and merging with United, United had to get rid of Otis and Carrier, so they weren't a monopoly, um, or didn't, weren't going into the monopoly territory. But um, Raytheon's balance sheet before the merger was phenomenal, um, a lot less, a lot, lot, lot less debt than Boeing, um, a way better financial situation, and merging to become the second biggest. I think they they really positioned here to take to them. Um, take this industry by storm so i agree and what really separates raytheon is that they have the most advanced defense sector probably not the biggest but the most advanced so i mean that plays a factor in um in the future obviously but um my biggest well raytheon uh rtx was my biggest pickup but my most speculative um pickup was Smile Direct Club, which has a, a very uh, oh, we're talking about growth stocks now. Jeez, very rough history in this chat in this group of investors. <laughs> um, at four dollars a share, I couldn't pass up the potential of Smile Direct Club, at least in a small position. Um, their main competitor, Align, which is a Invisalign, has a no complete no compete clause with um, um, Smile Direct Club right now until 2022 because they lost the lawsuit. Um, but for direct consumer um, in like braces, clear braces for a straightener. But uh, Smile Direct Club is definitely expanding into more markets. And um, I just see the potential for them even it, with a small position to eventually grow into what a line is, if they can um, grow in those two years before Invisalign can attack that market. And um, we see this, we see this 9% increase today that Luke is showing on his screen. Um, 
we saw we know, we saw news come out that they're opening up their telemedicine service for dentists. So it's um I think this nine percent hike is a very short sighted hike. Um, I think a lot of a lot of the market trends are going very short sighted right now. But I mean, we talked about it earlier, like Smart Threat Club, do. Casper, these consumer based IPOs. I mean, they they have such such little debt that uh. They're fine. I mean, if if they can stay afloat and find a way to attack and attack some sort of different strategy or I mean, different, they've got, different they've got that two year advantage on their biggest competitor. Yeah, exactly. So if they can do that, they can they can brand name double from these levels. I mean, it's already happening with them having a deal with Walmart and getting some of their products into the Walmart um, business. But yeah, again, at four dollars, I couldn't pass up the opportunity of at least holding a small position as a speculative long term investment. Yeah. No, I I do like um, Smile Direct Club. I, I actually I. I made a trade on them a few months back when they were not around four dollars. But I mean, they ever was since it when they were day, fifteen and posted their yeah. their earnings and went down to eight. Yeah, it was up that's there. what Andrew um, did. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just I was doing options on them. I was buying calls and puts, and they were going all over the place ever since they IPO'd. Um, so really, just got to look for you know once they settle down. I know with everything that's going on, they're it's just the volatility is still there. Um, but yeah, like 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 you said, Eric, they, there's not a lot of debt for them as of right now. Their market cap is so small. Um, I mean, even even so, there is a shot that they could end up getting, you know, end up for a shot for being bought out. But I mean, even at that point, I mean, it's it's four bucks a share. You pick up a small position, you know, you win, great. If you lose, it, it's nothing. It's not like it's gonna hurt too bad. So. Don't make it a huge part of your portfolio, obviously, but um, definitely, you know, super tiny market cap one to get to get in there. And I mean, you get a couple hundred, two, two, three hundred dollars into the small direct club, and you just let it sit there until it's at eight. I mean, it's it's only two, three hundred dollars, but that's that's a double in your money. You're just right there. You know, yeah, and it's 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 got up. the history. Yeah, it's it's in Walmart. It's just a matter of of time, and it's got that two year buffer over Invisalign before it starts competing in those type of in that type of sector. So, yeah, it's definitely whenever you whenever you have a company that's disrupting um, its market, then um, I guess it's worth some sort of investment. Maybe not in Andrew's case, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I thought it was worth it. I like it. I like the picks. I like the plays. Um, we'll shoot over to Andrew. Um, Andrew, what have you got for us? I know you're uh, you're new to the investing world as well. I am new to the investing world. Um, I recently have actually picked up a book. Uh, it's called The Intelligent Investor by uh, Benjamin Graham, who, for anyone who doesn't know, was uh, Warren Buffett's uh, professor at Columbia. So as I've kind of progressed into the investing world, I've s- tried to smarten up my investments, but I've only like five chapters in the book. So I'm still learning uh, a lot, but it's completely changing my perspective. I try to sprinkle that in, into the group as much as I can. Um, yeah, so, but in terms of the stocks that I, I recently looked at, uh, I've been looking at real estate investment uh, trust, so REITs, uh, specifically Redwood uh, Trust. Um, and so, you know, based off of my quick, and that's uh, RWT. Yeah, I'll throw that on the screen. Boom. So, you know, from my, my quick research of REITs, they, they tend to fluctuate with interest rates. Um, and obviously, there's a huge problem with interest rates right now as our country is falling apart because of current, uh, you know, of this virus. So I saw that they took a big tumble in their price. They were trading at, uh, you know, seventeen, eighteen dollars right before this hit, um, and their PE is one point seven five, and their dividend yield is fifty. And this, this is before they paid their before they, I think they all cut their dividends, all the, the REITs because of this. Yeah. But, uh, you know, REITs, I think, are a good long term place. So once the interest rates, you know, stop fluctuating, this price is going to shoot back up and they're going to pay a high dividend. 
Uh, so I got into a couple of those, uh, Two Harbors investment as well as new residential investment. So yeah, that's, I mean, you know, I kind of want to hear what the, uh, you know, the gentleman in this chat have to say about REITs. I know Eric and I have been talking on the side about it, but hear from other people. I like them. Um, I like them for the cash flow. I mean, for REITs, they have to pay out 90% of what they make as, as a dividend. So you're always going to get that high dividend. A lot of times they're monthly dividend payers as well, which monthly dividend payers are great because you're always getting that cash flow every month. Um, obviously right now it's, it's, uh, these, these REITs, these, uh, mortgage companies, housing companies are kind of in a tough spot. Um, I know there's been like lots of talk I've seen, um, of people just not being able to pay rent. Like if they go on, if they're unemployed. Um, so I feel like that's, what's going to hurt them, you know, in the short term, obviously long term they're going to be fine. Um, especially with interest rates being so low. Um, and obviously, you know, a 50% dividend, there's no way um, that's sustainable. But I mean, you know, they're, they're always going to be high regardless around that, you know, 10% range. Um, so I, I like REITs. Um, obviously, it wouldn't make them a huge part of the portfolio because you're not going to see too much like capital appreciation as far as your stock price goes, but you're, you're going to see, you know, obviously a lot of that cash flow. So I like it. I like the pick. Um, what do you guys think of re anyone that's got anything else on REITs there? Uh, I don't really know much about them, but like from what uh, Andrew and you have been saying, like they sound like are pretty good, like for like that dividend cash flow. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, they're a good pick, but like they're not going to appreciate too much. So, yeah. Um, all right. Um, I don't know if we have Alex still, we probably don't have Alex, do we? I think it's only just us four now, right? Yeah, yeah, I think we had so. a meeting at 5.30. Gotcha. All right, yeah, well, no worries. Um, I mean, that's really all I had. Was there any any last-minute things that, that you, you, any of you guys wanted to touch on? Um, talk about? Um, I think that's pretty much it for today. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I guess what we'll try to do is we'll try to do these, you know, maybe once a week, once every two weeks, whenever we get around to it, um, just so, you know, uh, the audience can kind of get our thoughts on everything, kind of see some different perspectives. Obviously, we talked on a huge variety of different um, stocks today. So hopefully, you know, you got a little bit of information on there. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. And, uh, you know, we'll see you in the next video.